Hello guys. So in this video, we will implement the entire neural network from scratch. That is, we will implement forward propagation. We will implement backward propagation also in order to update the weights. Everything will be from scratch. We will just make use of NumPy library. Okay. So till now, we have seen what do we mean by neural network? How neural network learns? How do we apply gradient descent to a neural network so that we can minimize the cost function? And I have also released few videos on how to implement a part by part from scratch, right? So first we have seen how to implement a single neuron. Then we have seen how to implement a single layer of a neural network. And we have also seen how to implement a forward propagation in a neural network, right? So in this video, we will combine all those things. Along with that, we will also add how can we implement back propagation in Python from scratch, okay? So I have already released a video on what all equations we need to do. We need to write it in Python for back propagation purpose, right? I have also explained it with the detailed derivations uh, from the cost function that we are considering and also the activation functions. Though I have not told you the uh, derivations of the activation functions in that video. So in this video, we will see how we can implement the derivatives of a ReLU activation function, okay? So let's get started. So actually before proceeding into coding, I would like you uh, to show that uh, what, what is the network architecture, how many layers we will have. And I will, I just want to show you the equations that are involved, right? So here it is. So we will make use of two hidden layered neural network and one output layer. We will have S1 neurons in hidden layer and S2 number of neurons in hidden layer 2 and one neuron in output layer. And input features, uh, let's call it as N. We will decide while coding how many input features we will have and how many training examples or observations we will have. Let's call it as M. Okay. So this is how the neural network looks like for our implementation. The activation at the output neuron will be sigmoid and the activations at the input hidden layers will be ReLU. Okay. And these are the shapes that are associated with this particular neural network. And these are the equations that we will need in order to implement our neural network from scratch. Okay. So the task we are considering here will be a binary classification task. Okay. So let me just write it. Binary classification where we will have the target variables 1 or 0. Okay. So what we will do, we will create some dummy data. Dummy data using numpy.random.randn. Okay. So using this, we will create our X and also our Y, which will be in the range 0 and 1. So Y will take only values between 0 and 1 and np.random.random will provide us some uh, sampling from the standard normal distribution. Okay. So let us do that. So this will be just a dummy data, not any particular data at the time considering. Okay. So now after we implement this, if you want to generalize it to any of any of your task with two hidden layers, you can use this code as it is with just a change in the weights dimension, okay, based on your number of neurons in the hidden layer, okay. So now let's get started. So here, first of all, what we will do, we will create some dummy data using NumPy. So for that, what I'll say, x is equal to np.random.randn. So let's say we will have around 15 features and let's say we have 100 observations for now. Okay. So we are just, our goal for this video is to understand how do we write the code from scratch for a neural network to learn. Okay. So that's our goal. Let's not worry more about the data that we are using. Okay. So this is my X. It has 15 features and 100 observations. And similarly, I will create my Y. So y is equal to np dot random dot random and I want it to be the values between 0 comma 2. So here 0 is the lower limit, 2 is the higher limit. It will be excluding that particular 2 so that we will have the values either 0 or 1. And how many values I want? I want 100 values, right? So I, I can also specify the shape that I want it to be. So 1 comma 100. So I want it to be a numpy array of shape 1 comma 100, okay? So what it is saying, expected type int got tuple instead. Okay, so let me just check that. Okay, so it will be rand int, not rand n, rand int. Okay, 
so now it is fine now that we have defined our x and y so let me just check how many ones we have in the y variable okay so for that what i'll do i'll just type something number of ones in y so what i can do y dot i can say sum so it will just add up all the ones and then it will print out so that will be our number of ones in this particular particular variable y so i'll execute it so that okay we have 52 ones and remaining 48 will be zeros those are our target variables okay and one most important thing is i have set random dot seed to 100 some value 100 so that if you want to reproduce these results every time that you execute the same results will be produced okay so if you change the seed the results would be different okay please keep that in mind now that we have created this x and y so let us create our neural network architecture okay so what i'll say i will say let's create weights and biases of our neural network so as i told you we will have three layers two hidden layers and one output layer so i'll say w1 is equal to np dot random dot rand n so this will be a random initialization of weights for layer one okay so we have input features how much 15 input features right so we need to have so let's decide how many neurons we can have in our first hidden layer so let's let's stick with 10 neurons in our hidden layer one okay so the shape would be 10 comma 15 okay so what happens our hidden layer will have 10 neurons and our input features are 15 in numbers so that our weight one shape of the weight one matrix will be 10 comma 15 okay so this will return us a numpy array of shape 10 cross 15 10 rows and 15 columns from some sta from standard normal distribution and i need to have this as a small numbers otherwise uh, my neural network would have something called as exploding gradients problem so what i'll do i will just multiply it with some small number 0 0.01 so that it will divide all the values by 100 okay so that's what i'm doing here so now i'm creating bias b1 this will be the bias associated with hidden layer 1 and it will be let me initialize it to zeros and it will be of shape 10 cross 1 okay so 10 comma 1 so this np dot zeros will create me a numpy array of shape 10 cross 1 with the values all set to 0 okay so that's what my bias is so here i'll say weights and bias for hidden layer 1 hidden layer 1 okay and now i will create weights and bias for hidden layer 2 so this will be so let us consider we will have uh, five neurons in our hidden layer 2 so our weights 2 would be np dot random dot random and uh, our weight shape would be 5 cross 10 correct because we are assuming we have five neurons in our second layer second hidden layer okay so it will be 5 cross 10 and again i will multiply it with some small value so let's say 0 0.01 so let's maintain that standard for now okay so we'll see if it doesn't work we will see uh, we will play with the weights and uh, with the initialization of the weights and biases okay so similarly i will create bias 2 and it will be np dot zeros of shape 5 cross 1 right because i have five neurons in my hidden layer 2 i want five biases each bias associated with one neuron in the hidden layer 2 okay so this is my weights and bias set for hidden layer 2 so now i have to create weights and bias for output layer okay so remember our output layer has only one neuron so weight 3 will be of shape random dot random it will be of shape 1 cross 5 why this 5 this one is because we have one neuron in the output layer and 5 because we have 5 neurons in the previous layer that is hidden layer 2 so that's why the shape of weights 3 is 1 cross 5 and then i will multiply it also with a small number 0 0.0001 okay and then b3 b3 is equal to np dot zeros so it will be just one by one so in order to just maintain the 
dimensionality of the weights and bias matrix i am creating bias 3 though it is it will have only one value i am creating it to be a two dimensional array with one row and one column so that's what my bias 3 looks like so now if you look at the initialized weights so let me just print out weights of layer 1 it will be w1 and i'll cop print bias of layer 1 it will be b1 okay so what i'll do i will copy this so that it will be easy for me to print for layer 2 and layer 3 so it will be w2 okay and it will be b2 this is layer 2 so similarly layer 3 layer 3 w3 and b3 right so now if i execute it you will see the initialization of the weights and biases so these are the initializations so weights 1 layer 1 so this is of shape uh, what's the shape it's 10 cross 15 10 rows and 15 columns so 1 2 3 4 4 3s are 12 plus 3 15 columns we have and we will have 10 rows here so this is weights 1 and this is the bias 1 so all zeros all 10 neurons will be initialized with a bias value of 0 so similarly we will have the weights 2 it will be 5 cross 10 okay 5 rows and 10 columns you can verify that and bias will be of uh, shape 5 cross 1 5 rows 1 column okay similarly weights of layer 3 it will be 1 cross 5 so we have 1 rows and 5 columns and these are the randomly initialized weight values and we will have just one bias at layer 3 and it's also of uh, shape 1 cross 1 two dimensional umpire okay so we are fine with our weights and bias initialization at least for now we do not know while we apply gradient design whether these values will work or no we will try to play if it's not working properly okay so now i have defined my weights and biases i need to define my forward pass and backward pass methods right so let me define them so for that what i'll do i will create a method here i'll create a function i'll call it as define forward pass and inputs would be x weights 1 weights 2 weights 3 bias 1 bias 2 bias 3 okay so these are my inputs for forward pass method or you can call it as a function for now because we are not making use of any object oriented programming in this particular video okay so what i'll do i will start my computation so in order to do this i will make use of the same code that i have explained to you in my forward pass implementation video okay so i'll create a dictionary of layer computations is equal to okay so i do not want to use any of this because I will cover everything of this sort uh, when I am explaining you about the Python as a language, coding language. Okay, so let's not worry about all those things, importing and all. So layer computations will be a dictionary, right? So it will be a dictionary, and then I will start my computations associated with forward pass. Okay, so first hidden layer one computations, right? Hidden layer one computations. So it will be. I will call it as z1 is equal to np dot matmul. So what will be the formula for this? I have shown it to you here, right? So these these things we will implement it. So w1 into x plus b1. So this will be a matrix multiplication. Okay. So I will just write w1 comma x. So it will be a capital X because I have taken capital X, and then I will need to add bias. I will be adding b1. Then what I'll say, I want to compute the activation. So in order to compute this, I need to let I have we have discussed that we will use ReLU as an activation function for both the hidden layers. So I'll just say ReLU of Z1. So we have not defined ReLU method here. So let, let us define that. Define ReLU. Input will be Z. Output will be the output of whatever output of a ReLU function, right? So it will be np dot maximum of 0 comma z right so this will be returned we have defined our relu so we are done with hidden layer 1 computations so what i'll do i will just copy the same thing 
okay so i'll say hidden layer 2 computations it will be z2 a2 it will be w2 into it will be a1 input will be a1 for hidden layer 2 right and for a2 it will be relu of z2 okay and i need to add bias 2 so now we have done our computations with hidden layer 2 so then what we will do we will copy this and we will call this as layer 3 computations and this will be z3 this will be a3 and our multiplication would be with w3 and a2 correct the input for hidden layer 3 will be output from hidden layer 2 correct sorry the input for output layer will be output from input hidden layer 2 right so that's what i have written here a2 is an output from hidden layer 2 and i will be adding my bias b3 and it will be relu of z3 so its uh, output will have an activation of sigmoid right so because we are dealing with a binary classification so it will be sigmoid of z3 so we have not defined sigmoid function also so let us define that so relu we are done with so let me define sigmoid of z so it will be return 1 by uh, 1 plus np dot exp of minus z so this is what our sigmoid activation looks like correct so this is simple sigmoid activation so now we have got everything that we need for forward propagation so only thing remaining is we have to save these computations in our layer computations dictionary so let's do that so let's do that after each layer computations layer computations of z1 is equal to z1 okay and layer computations of a1 is equal to a1 okay so similarly we will store the values for layer 2 and output layer as well so layer computations of z2 is equal to z2 layer computations of a2 is equal to a2 so now in the end layer computations of z3 is equal to z3 and layer computations of a3 is equal to a3 so this is our forward pass function okay so if you want me to comment i can come you can treat this as a cache to store the computations during forward pass okay so let's just name that uh, what that variable actually does okay so now what we'll do we will return layer computation so this is our implementation of forward pass method so now what i will do i will just call that so i'll it returns me something so i'll store that in layer computations and let me just call this method and we will see whether it's working fine or we have messed up with any dimensions here during matrix multiplication and all okay so let's check it out so print layer computations okay so if i just execute it okay so i'm not getting any error and i'm also getting the output so let's so what we'll do we'll print the shape of uh, output from these layers so what we can do we can just print the shape of a1 a2 a3 and then we can verify it okay so for that for no let me hard code it print shape of a1 okay so it will be layer computations of a1 dot shape so similarly i want the shape of a2 and a3 also right so i'll say shape of a2 shape of a3 i'll accordingly change the key values here so now if i execute it so shape of a1 is 10 cross 100 does it make sense yes correct because we have 100 observations with us and hidden layer 1 has 10 neurons in it so each observation will have 10 10 associated numbers so we have 10 rows and 100 columns so each column represents our 
training example, right? So I haven't discussed it with you the representation of x, correct? So x will be of the, this particular shape. So x is equal to, so it's like this x1, observation 2 or training example 2, training example 3, so on and so forth, xm up to m. So in this case, we have uh, 15 features, right? So this will be of size 15, it will have 15 features and it will be x1, okay, x2, so on and so forth up to, we have 100 observations, right? So it will be 100 column. So this is what our representation of x is looking like. So since we have 10 neurons in hidden layer 1, our output should be 10 cross 100, okay? So why this? If you look at the forward pass equation here, W1 is of shape. What's the shape of W1? It is 10 cross 15 and X is of shape 15 cross 100, correct? So if you multiply W1 and X as a matrix multiplication, the output will be 10 cross 100, correct? So that's what we are getting here. So we are good with the dimensionality of A1. So we are good with the dimensionality of A2 because we have 5 neurons in our hidden layer. Two, that's why it is 5 cross 100 and shape of A3 will be one output for each training example or observation, right? So we have one output for all the 100 observations. So each observation has one output. So that's what it is representing. So now we know that our forward propagation is working as expected, okay? And one thing you have to understand here is the A3 NumPy array will have 100 values all ranging between 0 and 1. Okay, because we are using sigmoid as our activation function. Okay, so now, now that we are done with forward propagation, we will implement our backward propagation. Uh, okay, so before that, we need to implement our cost function, correct? So, what is the cost function for this? Since we are using binary classification, the cost function would be so, cost would be its binary cross entropy. So, I'll just write it binary cross entropy. So, it is the same thing that we use for logistic regression, correct? So, the equation is given as cost is equal to minus 1 by m y i into log of predicted value of i plus 1 minus y i into log of 1 minus predicted value of the ith example. So, this will be summation over all the examples. Okay. So, this is what we will be implementing now. So, this will be our cost function. And in our case, y hat i is A3. Right. Because uh, A3 is our predicted value in this particular neural network. Right. A3, which is also known as y hat. So, now what we will do? We will implement our cost function. So, now after doing this forward pass, we will define a method and call it as cost. Uh, so, I will say define compute cost and this will be a binary cross entropy. Binary cross entropy function. Okay. So, let me just name it. Something. So, the inputs would be the predictions and the actual value. Correct. So, we have to compute the cost by considering the actual value on the predicted output. So, for that, so we, we just need to implement this particular formula in Python now, in that particular method. Okay. So, let us do that. So, compute cost. First, we need m. So, it will be length of actual. So, the predicted length. Okay. And then we need log of predictions. So, why we need this? I am implementing this particular part now log of predictions and then I will implement log of 1 minus predictions so that it will be easy for us to combine everything in one go. Okay. So let us not write everything entire thing in one line. Otherwise we will get confused. Okay. So log of predictions is equal to I will make use of np dot log of predictions. So similarly I will say log of 1 minus predictions. So, I will just name it as we have written. Okay. So, it will be np dot log of 1 minus 
predictions so this is our second part and then uh, we will compute the cost it will be minus 1 by m okay and i will be multiplying it with so i have to summation do summation over all the training examples right so i will just do that so it will be 1 by m minus 1 by m into np dot sum of so i need so let's see so what's the formula again sorry for that y i into log of y hat i so actual into so it will be actual into log of predictions okay and then plus 1 minus actual correct so 1 minus actual into log of 1 minus predictions so this is what we have to implement correct so what i will do i will enclose individual term in its own bracket so that we will not get confused with the implementation and it will work just fine so i'll enclose this term also in another pair of bracket okay so are we good yes so we are good now so cost is this one then i'll say return cost so now what we'll do we will verify whether this is returning a required output so what we have to get we have to get just one number out of this particular method okay so let's verify that so after calling forward pass let me call that compute cost compute cost so what it takes predictions and actual right so what are our predictions layer computations of a3 correct so layer computations of a3 comma y right so these are our predictions and actuals so okay predictions and actual so then what i'll say i'll say print cost after just one forward pass okay and just print that particular value here so now if i execute it shift f10 so did it work okay so okay so i have made a syntax error here so it should be there should be a colon okay so now let's see okay fine so we needed one single number from this cost function and we are getting that so we are good with the implementation of our cost function so you can verify it if you find any mistakes you can comment it out in the comment sections okay so this is our cost now so now we have computed our cost we will actually need to compute the derivation of this particular cost with respect to weights 1 weights 2 weights 3 so for that we need to define a function call it as backward back propagation and implement all these formulas in python okay so let's do that so for that what i'll do i will create a method i will defining backward propagation function okay so i'll call it as so let me what we can call it as we can call it as back propagation or backward pass so let's call it as back propagation and inputs will be x y i need layer computations because i'm using them as cache right layer computations i need weights right so let me just call it as give me a second let me just clear out the naming conventions here okay so let's let's just call it as weights one weights two weights three only okay so we'll say sorry weights one weights two weights three we'll also need bias one bias 2 bias 3 so it would have made more sense for us to use a dictionary for weights and biases as well something called as parameters dictionary and we could have had weights and biases in them but let's not worry about it we are not trying to generalize this code for multiple layers right so the goal of this video is just to learn how to implement backward propagation entire neural network and to understand how it actually works okay so we have a required arguments here let's 
do the back propagation now okay so we will take all the layer computations in single variables a1 is equal to layer computations of a1 and we will take a2 a3 z1 z2 z3 also okay so these are our a1 a2 a3s a2 a3 a2 a3 okay and we will have our z1 is equal to layer computations of z1 so similarly we will take out the z2 and z3 computations also z2 z3 right so it will be of z2 and z3 so we have our a1s and a1 a2 a3s and z1 z2 z3s now so now we will start implementing this particular set of equations so the first thing is we need to compute dz3 dw3 db3 so i have written these equations separately here so i will be referring from that particular screen and i will be implementing the same okay so let's do that so first one will be dz3 it will be is equal to a3 minus y okay then we will compute dw3 so it will be 1 by m right so we need to define m we haven't defined it so let's define that m here so m will be number of training observations right so i can just say anyway we are taking x x dot shape of 1 because the number of columns will be equal to number of observations that we have so we have our m now so it will be 1 by m so now d dw3 which means dj by dw3 okay so it will be 1 by m into np dot matmul so what will what it will be it will be dz3 comma a2 transpose okay so this is what my dw3 is np dot matmul dz3 comma a2 dot t okay dot t uh, stands for transpose of that particular numpy array if you treat it as a matrix it will be a transpose of that particular matrix so now db3 it will be is equal to 1 by m into 1 by m into uh, np dot sum of dz3 okay axis is equal to 1 we want it to be column wise sum so axis is equal to 1 I will say keep dims equal to true. I want to maintain the dimensionality of everything. Okay. So, okay. So, hope it's fine. NP dot sum DZ3. Is it correct? DB3 is yes. So, we are good with it. Okay. So, now we are done with it. We will implement. We are done with layer 3 derivatives right dz3 dw3 db3 now we will go a layer back dz2 dw2 db2 okay so i will say dz2 is equal to now dz2 is equal to i just want to show you the equations again here dz2 is matrix multiplication of w3 transpose with dz3 multiplied with derivative of relu right so now we want to actually define the derivative of relu so let's define that we haven't defined that particular function right so let me just define it. so we have our sigmoid relu. let me define it just below relu method okay so define so derivative of relu so input will be it will any x okay so the derivative can be uh, given as return np dot array because x will be an array right so x greater than 0 and i want the return to be in float okay because all my weights are in float floating point so i want the return type to be of type float 32 so let me just say i have to say np dot float 32 here so this is my derivative of relu so why this is the derivative of relu so if you know the relu activation function it is just max of 0 comma x right so if x is less than 0 return will be 0 
if x is greater than 0 return will be x so that's why the derivative is simple x greater than 0 what it will do it will return as the boolean array true false and then the d type i am telling it as float so if it is true it will be written as 1.0 if it is false it will be returned as 0.0 that's it so that's the derivative of relu so let me just give it a heading here derivative of relu and it's a relu activation function okay so this is what it is i want to just to be clean here i'm giving the extra space sigmoid activation function okay so okay so why we did this because we want the derivative of relu in order to calculate dz2 correct so let's do that it's mp dot matmul weights 3 dot transpose comma dz3 right multiplied with derivative of relu and i want to pass z2 to this z3 z3 or z2 it will be z2 correct so it will be z2 so if you want to verify the formula it's here so i am doing this particular thing here okay relu derivative of relu with respect to z2 okay now i will implement this dw2 okay so for that i'll say dw2 is equal to 1 by m into np dot again it will be a matrix multiplication it will be dz2 comma a1 dot transpose correct so this is my dw2 and db2 will be 1 by m into np dot sum of dz2 along column axis is equal to 1 and i want to maintain the dimensions keep them equal to true okay so this is my db2 so is it correct it's np dot sum so let me just verify the formula dz2 axis is equal to 1 keep them is equal to true okay so we are good with db2 as well so similarly i will implement for hidden layer 1 right so dz1 i need dz1 i need dw1 and i need db1 right so dz1 will be similar thing so it will be np.matmel weights 2.t dz2 derivative of relu with respect to z1 that's it okay so let's write that out np.matmel so weights 2. Dot transpose dz2 okay and then multiply with derivative of relu with respect to z1 correct and dw1 it will be same similar to this instead of dz2 it will be dz1 and it will be x dot t right because uh, input for layer 1 is x correct so we have to have x dot t here so what i can do i can just copy this for dw1 and i'll say it's dz1 and it will be x dot t so this is my dw1 okay and similarly i will have my db1 so it will be similar thing everything remains same and only difference is instead of dz2 it will be dz1 okay so that's it so i think we are good with this back propagation right so let me just scroll it down back propagation okay so now what we will do we will store these things so these are actually our gradients right so we need to subtract this from our weights and biases so what we will do we will initially create a dictionary called as okay i don't even need to create the skeleton dictionary here i can directly create a dictionary here gradients is equal to it will be a dictionary so i'll say dw1 is dw1 okay and db1 will be db1 
so i'm just going layer by layer by layer so actually i have to come from back side right so let me just call it as d dw3 db3 dw3 db3 and dw2 db2 dw2 right and key will be db2 and value will be db2 similarly dw1 will be the key value will be dw1 that we have computed here okay and db1 will be the key value will be db1 okay so we have our gradients dictionary ready and i can say return okay so there is a mistake here db1 is getting highlighted okay it should be db1 not db2 okay so we are good so i'll say return gradients so that's it we are done with back propagation okay so what we can do we can actually check the shape of this as well okay so let's verify that let me call back propagation gradients is equal to back propagation so i can just copy this entire thing right so x y and all these things so these are not defined because w1 w2 right so we have named it w1 so it's just a messy naming convention uh, but that's okay we are not here to assess the code quality just to understand the implementation how neural network works correct so this is w1 w2 w3 b1 b2 b3 anything else it requires no right okay so we are good so now what i will say print so i want to actually check the shape of all these gradients dw1 dw2 db2 etc right so i'll run through the loop for key comma value in gradients dot items print shape of something it is something so what are those some things format so i want key and shape will be gradients of key dot shape correct so this is what i want to print so let's see if it's working or giving any errors no it's working fine correct so dw3 as expected so it should be of shape 1 cross 5 because we have five neurons in layer 2 correct and it's just one bias okay dw2 5 cross 10 right uh, if we, okay we can verify this uh, just give me a second we'll also print the shapes of weights w1 w2 w3 etc okay give me a second let me just write that code and then get back to you okay so i have just added these lines here you know to print the shape of w3 b3 w2 b2 w1 b1 so that we can be sure that our gradients are also of the same shape okay so here it is w3 is of shape 1 cross 5 so is dw3 we want both of them to be same shape so that we can update them in the next step b3 1 cross 1 db3 1 cross 1 w2 5 cross 10 dw2 5 cross 10 b2 5 cross 1 db2 5 cross 1 w1 10 cross 15 dw1 10 cross 15 p1 10 cross 1 db1 10 cross 1 okay so we are good with the dimensionalities of weights and biases and also their gradients okay so now we have defined almost everything we just need to combine everything and call it multiple times so what we have to do we have we what we have done till now we have initialized the weights so let me just write the steps quickly initialized the weights okay this is the first step then we will do forward pass we will compute the cost we will do backward pass or back propagation and after doing it we will in this we will compute the gradients correct in backward propagation compute gradients 
we will update the weights and biases w's and b's and then we will repeat this particular steps 2 through 5 for some iterations and we want in each iteration our cost to be reduced okay we can add another step here 3 dot a compute accuracy also since we are dealing with the binary classification problem so we can do this also so we have to put everything together in a loop that's it we have done everything right now right so let's do that so let me just minimize that so where we can do that so let me say let me create another method just to update the parameters okay so i'll say function to update weights and biases so here what i am doing i will be implementing this particular part here okay i will be implementing this particular thing so we need just this one and then we are ready to put everything together so for this we will also have some learning rate okay so let's say define update weights and biases okay so inputs would be weights 1 weights 2 weights 3 bias 1 bias 2 bias 3 and we will get our gradients and what we will do we can either define learning rate here or we can pass it as a parameter so let's pass it as a parameter learning rate because this is the initialization during gradient descent algorithm right so we will initialize that in that particular method called as gradient descent so here what we will do we will just update the weights weights 1 is equal to weights 1 minus learning rate into gradients of w1 so these are the keys right uh, it will be dw1 not d w1 it's dw1 right so similarly we will update so let me do layer by layer okay so bias 1 is equal to bias 1 minus learning rate into gradients of db1 now i will just copy these two things twice right so it will be weights 2 bias 2 so it's weights 2 minus gradients of weights 2 and bias gradients of gradients of bias 2 okay and it will be bias 2 here so similarly it will be weights 3 weights 3 it will be dw3 db3 3 and 3 okay so 3 3 3 3 2 2 2 2 1 1 1 okay so we are good with this particular thing now what we will return we will just return these things return this weights and up biases updated weights 1 weights 2 weights 3 bias 1 bias 2 bias 3 so now i am actually thinking that we could we should have put these in a dictionary called as parameters but it's okay we have come a long way let's not do any more changes to the code okay so i will return this and finally i will define my gradient descent function gradient descent function so define gradient descent and it will take x comma y comma weights 1 weights 2 so this is why i wanted everything to be in params dictionary but that's okay bias 2 bias 3 okay so that's it and then so sorry it's bias 3 i will first define the learning rate so let me set it to some value 0. Point, uh, some random value so usually it will not be this particular high uh, we will see if it's giving okay so let's say 0. 0.03 usually the starting value 0. 0.03 0. 0.003 something like that so we will go with it so then what i'll do i will take these things in a simple single variables so let me say w1 comma w2 comma w3 comma b1 comma b2 comma b3 
is equal to this all things here okay and then i will need a list of costs to store the cost after each iteration so it will be costs and also let me compute accuracies at each iteration is equal to let me store that in the list so we haven't defined a method to compute accuracies we'll define that later once we are done with gradient descent okay so now we are ready to rock and roll for i in range of let's say some 100 iterations okay and then i will first call my forward pass and it will return me layer computations is equal to forward pass and it will take this x w1 w2 w3 b1 b2 b3 right so x comma so all these things in order so sorry i'll just copy this and then pass this parameters so this is my now i will get my layer computations dictionary correct so now i need to predict right so for predict i need to pass in a3 from layer computations to actually predict my classes because a3 will have the values between 0 and 1 that is the output of sigmoid so i need to define the predict the classes out of those predicted probabilities right so for that what i'll do i will create a method called as predict classes okay so let me create that so i'll say where where should i put it sigmoid okay so i'll put it just after sigmoid function to predict classes from probabilities okay so let's define that so i'll say define predict classes and i will get my predictions here so which will be the values ranging from 0 to 1 so because those are the probabilities right so what i'll do i will say predicted classes is equal to i'll create np dot zeros of length of predictions of 0 okay so then predicted class so i just want the values to be one where the predictions are greater than or equal to 0 0.5 otherwise it will be zero class zero and class one so that's why sigmoid that's what actually the default logistic regression is right so let's do that so for that what we can do so i can use np dot where it will be predictions of zero greater than or equal to sorry greater than or equal to 0 0.5 is equal to 1 so if it's true it will return the indices where it is true and i will set everywhere these things the zeros i will turn it to ones and remaining things will remain as zeros so that's what this particular line is doing okay then what i'll say i'll just return predicted classes okay so that's it i need to call this in my gradient descent method right so once i'm done with the layer computations i will store my get my class predictions i will store it in a variable class predictions is equal to predict classes and input will be layer computations of a3 okay so that's it now i have my class predictions okay so then what i'll do i need to compute the accuracy also correct so i need to define the method called as accuracy also let's not use any inbuilt for now we will create a method one more method called as compute accuracy okay or calculate accuracy whatever it is so let's define that we have compute cost okay let's me define it soon after predict classes function to calculate accuracy so this is define calculate accuracy so it will take predictions and predicted and actual value okay so predictions and actual so it will be a simple thing accuracy is equal to np dot sum 
into so predictions is equal to actual okay so this is what the accuracy so it will wherever it is matching the values 0 is 0 1 is 1 it is matching it will do the summation so out of 100 if 83 positions are matching the sum will be 83 and we will divide it by the total number of values we have total number of observations we have so it will be uh, so let me say return accuracy by length of actual so if we we have to convert it into percentage right so we can multiply it by 100 okay in that case so since we can get an idea from the decimal values let's not multiply it by 100 because it doesn't make sense because we have 100 examples dividing it by 100 and again multiplying it by 100 doesn't make any sense so let's leave it as it is okay so with this we will call this calculate accuracy also in this particular method and i'll say accuracy is dot append calculate accuracy class predictions comma actual is y so this is what i'm passing to it okay and then i will compute my cost cost after each iteration right so cost is equal to we have a method called as compute cost and it will take again prediction and actual values correct so it will be uh, what are the let me check the compute cost method so predictions and actual right so whether the definition is correct so let me just verify it okay so let me just write it so predictions is class predictions sorry so for this it's not actual class it's the probabilities right because we are using binary cross entropy so we need to pass in the predictions that is layer computations of a3 so if the first method that is first argument is predictions only right yeah so it should be layer computations of a3 right and then the actual is y correct so we want to minimize the distance between the predicted and actual value considering predicted probability as our output okay so i think i haven't covered a video on binary cross entropy let me cover that in a separate video okay so layer computations of a3 comma y so this is my compute cost okay and then i will append it costs dot append cost so this one here okay so what is it okay that's okay uh, i think it's because of this particular thing so what i'll do i'll just remove all these things here i do not want these things to be printed so i'll just use a multi-line command so that we are good so now we have computed the cost we need to compute the gradients and update the parameters right so let me call gradients is equal to back propagation will return me the gradients correct so i just need to call that back propagation and what are the values it will take weights one weights two weights three and etc right so let me just give that so back propagation so it takes x comma y comma layer computations weights 1 weights 2 weights 3 so instead of this i am using these particular variables here so i will have my updated values over here in the forward pass okay so i'll just replace them here okay so that's it and then what i'll say i will update the parameters using this particular method update weights and biases i will pass learning rate also along with that and i'll take this weights and biases so okay so we are good and this is some shadows okay that's okay it shadows the name 
we are not bothered about that so what we can do from gradient descent we actually need to return the weights and biases updated weights and biases along with costs and accuracies okay so return return everything weights biases costs accuracies okay so that's it so let's see if we get any error we will try to troubleshoot it okay so now i have my layer computations in the forward pass i just need to call gradient descent method right so let me just call it i am calling forward pass everything in gradient descent itself so i don't have to call it individual line by line so what it returns gradient descent returns me all these things so let me check sorry accuracy is equal to gradient descent pass these things so it's weights one weights w1 w2 w3 bias b1 b2 and b3 okay so let's see by printing the cost at first iteration and last iteration print costs okay so let me just give costs here and then let me print costs after first during first iteration and after the last iteration let me check the accuracies also print accuracies okay and accuracies of zero during the first iteration and accuracies after the last iteration we should see some improvement in the cost and accuracies so cost should come down and accuracy should go up okay so let's run it guys fingers crossed okay so there is some error here length of predictions of zero so what is it predictions of zero which line so in class predict classes method right so let's check that what i have done so predict classes uh, okay so this is the thing here okay hope it's fine now let's check yes so we are good with the implementation but cost doesn't seem to be reducing much so 693146693134 there is only a marginal reduction in the cost and accuracy there is no improvement so what we will do we will increase the number of iterations so in this loop let's run it for let's say 500 iterations and check if it's running mm, no there is no much improvement either so why it is happening maybe it's getting stuck in the local minima or something let me run it for thousand iterations mm, no there is no much improvement so why the network doesn't seem to be learning here three one four six so what we do is we'll plot the uh costs versus accuracy okay so i have imported matplotlib for the same purpose so let's make use of that now let's plot it so plt dot plot range x will be uh, i am using thousand iterations right so thousand comma costs so let just print cost plt dot show so let me execute it so this is the cost okay initially it is getting dropped but it seems to comes down in a very small way so what we'll do we'll try to increase the learning rate a bit and see instead of 0 0.3 let's check 0 
did I close the figure? Let me close it and then run it. So no. So what's happening? Okay, so it reduced and again it increased. So 0 0.3 doesn't seem to be working fine for us. Or let's increase the iterations, guys. It should have done the job for us. Or let's see. Let's let's take a leap of faith here and then run it. So no, there is no improvement. So what we will do? We will increase the number of iterations. So let's run it for some 5000 iterations and see. So usually this should not be the case. Okay, so the cost now whether 6929. Okay, so now there is a marginal reduction in the cost. So 0 0.5. Mm, the plot is giving me error. So let's check. So why it is okay? It's not ten thousand. It's five thousand, right? So okay, now there shouldn't be any errors. Okay. So what we'll do? We will increase the number of iterations and learning rate. We will maybe we can play with random seed or something of that sort. Hmm. Let's see. Random seed. Okay, we have set the random seed. Let's not worry about this. We'll see. We'll increase the number of iterations in the gradient design and see if it's working or not. So let's do 15,000 iterations. Learning rate 0.5. And I think we are doing everything good with the forward propagation in that case. Z1 plus B1, Z2 plus B2, B3. Okay, okay, looks fine. So now let's run it. Okay, again the dimension, but let's check the cost. No, so there is no much improvement. So we'll see. I think it's getting stuck in the plateau or something. So let's see. Okay, so I think I found out the issue here. So what what I'm doing? I'm getting the updated weights for one time but i'm again and again passing the initialized weights at the first step so the weights are not actually getting updated right so here i need to pass in the updated weights for every iteration we have to update the weights for every iteration and we have to make use of the newly updated weights at each iteration correct so that's what i have to do here so i'll just pass these things so let's see if this works okay and learning rate let it be 0.5 and no let's not run it for 15,000 let's just run it for 1000 items and run. first let it run for 100 items and we will check it okay so okay still there is no improvement but this was clearly an issue so we'll see so we'll increase it to maybe 500 iterations and nope still looks to be reducing but still not that much so let me do it for thousand iterations and yes so now you see if we run the code for thousand iterations if we do gradient descents update the weights for thousand iterations we are getting an accuracy of 100 percent so what we will do we will plot the costs graph how it is looking like and we'll try to interpret it why it is taking thousand iterations thousand and now i will execute it so this is what the cost actually looks like so this is not the ideal graph that i was expecting so for some reason it is getting stuck here so maybe it's a local optima local minima it is getting stuck at that particular point and it is not able to jump it so what or you can think of it as a plateau so it's 
the gradient is so small that the updates will be very small right so slowly it is coming 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 and at this particular point point it is finding a slope which is steeper so we are updating the gradients then we are able to see the reduction in the cost at each iteration so here there is some bump again maybe due to high learning rate that we have so that's okay now we are able to reduce the cost and also if we want we can plot the accuracy also in the same graph so let me say plt dot plot i can say accuracies and we'll show it so if i just look at it okay so here it is so this blue line here is of cost and accuracy is this particular red line here so you can see uh, this fluctuation is mainly due to the high learning rate so if i just zoom it if you look at the cost so you can see there is a fluctuation here. it's not the smooth convergence so if we reduce the if we reduce the learning rate and try it for multiple iterations we can we can be able to achieve the smoother convergence okay so this is how you can implement the entire neural network from scratch just making use of numpy okay so i will give this code a uh, link in the comment section i'll update this in the github so that you can also try it out so if you want to play with it uh, you can play with it uh, but just keep in mind that it's just a three layer neural network with one output neuron one neuron in the output layer and two hidden layers and in hidden layers we have 10 neurons in the first hidden layer and five neurons in the second hidden layer so if you want to play with the neurons you can just change this weight shape and it will do the trick for you even if you want to change the number of features and the number of examples so actually number of examples you can change it to any number and it the code won't break but if you change the number of features you have to update the weights of first layer accordingly and if you want to change the number of neurons in each hidden layer you need to update the dimensions of this weights 1 and weights 2 respectively okay and the same goes for bias 1 and bias 2 so if you just update it you can you, you are a, you are ready to play with it so what i want you to do is uh, i want you to take any specific data set uh, that is dealing with binary classification and plug in those data set that data set in this particular code so all i want you to do here is i want you to change these two lines take any data set with binary classification and pass it through this code and you can comment out the output so if you have any questions on this particular implementation you can ask that in the comment section i will be happy to get back to you so if you like the content please give it thumbs up share it among your peers and also if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do subscribe till we see in the next video happy learning bye bye